Today we play Mad Scientist and learn to clone things inside of Fusion. If you don't know me, my name is Casey Ferris, and I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube, and if you haven't subscribed, you should definitely do that. Let us clone. Here we are in Resolve 17. I have a couple of clips here. One's a little fireplace, and the other is a field. Huh, we're gonna use both of these. And you can actually download these clips and follow along if you want to. Just go to groundcontrol.film and go up to assets, free assets, and then towards the bottom, it's right here, free cloning practice footage. You can get this and follow along with me, yeah. Isn't that neat? So all I've done is import this media and drag it into a timeline. And with my playhead over this first one, let's go into Fusion. Okay, so let's say for whatever reason, we shot this and there's this spray bottle in here. Why didn't somebody take this out? Who would do this? Ruining our perfect rustic fireplace shot just with this. Ah! So what we're gonna do is an old fashioned clone to get rid of this thing. But here's the kicker friends. The shot is handheld. Why didn't we do it? Why? Why? Uh, why? Why didn't we lock it down? That's all right, we can deal with this. We're professionals, right? So here's what we're gonna do. Very first thing is just to scrub through this and find one of the sharper frames. Maybe one that isn't terribly blurry. Although there's gonna be some motion blur just because it's handheld. Let's find one that isn't quite so blurry. Yeah, maybe something like that. This is frame 23. So we're gonna do all our work on frame 23 here. Now there are probably a few different ways that we could go about this. This is the way that I generally use because it's easy and looks good. So anytime that you're gonna clone something, for the most part, it happens in a paint node. So what we're gonna do is run our original media through a paint node, and that's the fourth icon over here. I'll just drag this in between our media in and media out. So now we're connected to the paint node. So let's select our paint node, and we'll go up here to our viewer, and we're gonna paint this out using something like the clone stamp in Photoshop if you've ever used that. Pretty much, you gotta do a couple things to set this up. First thing is over here in the inspector under apply controls. Right here, click on this second icon, which is clone. So that's just gonna turn this into clone mode. And then in the upper left-hand corner of our viewer, we're gonna switch this to the fourth icon over. You sure would think it'd be this one, but it's gonna be the fourth one. This is just like your normal paintbrush. Normal paintbrush in clone mode will do what you want. So if you've ever cloned anything in Photoshop, this should make a ton of sense. But just in case you haven't, what you do is hold Alt and select basically a piece of the footage that you want to copy. So like, let's say, so let's say maybe this part of this brick. And what I like to do is put this little crosshair right on an edge of something, because then I can line up where my brush is when I copy this. So I'm gonna hit Alt, click right there, and it'll leave a little X. That means that I'm copying from there. And now I'm gonna start on this brick because I just picked the most freaking difficult pattern to ever clone. I'm gonna start right there on the edge of that brick and I can click and drag. And you see what we're doing here? It makes a little brick. Look at that. It does a pretty good job too. Look at that. So we're cloning over this to make it seem like there are bricks behind it. And then it's just a matter of kind of doing that over and over until it looks sort of decent. And the good news is you can do just an okay job and kind of keep going over it. And as long as you pay attention to making sure that you copy from areas that are just as light and have a similar texture, you're gonna be okay. I'm gonna twirl down brush controls and this changes the size and softness of our brush. A lot of the time when you're cloning something, you want your brush to be pretty soft. So I'm gonna boost that up a little bit. So now what it'll do is copy things a lot softer and a lot easier to kind of blend in and look realistic. That's always a good idea. I'm also gonna make my size just a touch smaller and we're just gonna go over this little part here and just slowly copy the tones of these bricks until we get something that looks sort of natural. There we go. And the nice thing about bricks is they're mostly the same size and so we can kind of just copy things and have it be pretty decent. And it's just a matter of just going over and over and over it until you just fix all of the problems. You gotta be really patient. But if you're patient and you do a good job, then that's really nice. So really what I'm trying to do here is make this brick look like it goes all the way across. And I'm not worrying about this other brick quite yet. I'm just kind of fixing one pattern of bricks. Now we can zoom in here because we have a hard edge. Gosh, we picked a very challenging thing to clone. You can even switch to something like a square brush to get some of those hard edges. And again, we can kind of blend this in a little bit, but we're trying to get this edge. And the good news, like I said before, is we don't have to be that amazing because this is a pretty small detail. 
and it's gonna look probably okay once we zoom out. Of course, it doesn't right now. It looks kind of weird, but like up here looks pretty good. And the other good thing is that nobody's really going to be looking for the specific problems that we're gonna be looking for, and so we can kind of relax just a touch. So I'm gonna make this really soft to just kind of blend this a little better. Just kind of softening this. And it, does it look natural? Mm, not necessarily. <laughs> but from far away, nobody's really going to be looking for that. Nobody's going to notice the difference for something like this. If you were that worried about it, you should have been worried about the shot when you shot it. And once you've gone over it and kind of got the main colors in, what I like to do is turn down the opacity of the brush to like 50, and you can kind of blend stuff a little bit more, right? And that just kind of makes things seem a little more natural, seem like they belong together just a touch more. What we're really going for here is to make something look like it's just not offensive. And then you don't really quite have to get the, the lighting right. It will just kind of blend a little better. You can even do things like copy a texture over that might work just a little nicer, especially with a really soft brush. And it just looks a little bit more natural. So there's the basic clone job. Oop, we forgot this part. Never mind. <laughs> So there we go, there's the basic clone job, and I'd say for the texture, for what we were up against, it looks all right. If you want to do a better job, or if you wanna take some more time, now is the time to do it, right here in this paint node. But let's say it looks great, and on 23, frame 23, oh baby, this is like, this is the bomb. Well, here comes the problem that we all knew was coming. If we get off of 23, oh, everything falls apart, it's terrible, why have we done this? Ah. But it's okay, let's just go back to frame 23. And what we're gonna do is basically take a still picture of this and then track the still so that it moves along with the footage. This is how you can paint something out over time. It's a pretty easy technique and works for a lot of situations. So there's a bunch of different ways to do a freeze frame. The one I like to use is called time speed. I'll hit shift spacebar to bring up our select tool menu and I'll type T-I-M-E and there's time stretcher and there's time speed. You want time speed, I'll hit add. And what this node does is just changes the speed of whatever you pipe into it. So with that node selected, we're gonna go up to our inspector and the speed we want is still, right? So let's say zero. And now when we click off of this, everything is ruined. Oh no, what have we done? Ah! What we actually need to do is just set this delay. Remember, we've been working on frame 23. So I'll click on this and say 23, boom. So what this is gonna do is wait until frame 23 and then it's going to pause the video. And so now when we scrub through this, it's just paused. See? Problem solved. Just use a still. Okay, guys. My name's Casey Ferris. That, no, I'm just kidding. What we're going to do is cut out this little bit that we've cloned and track it to our moving footage so that we keep the movement, but we basically just put a patch over this problem area here, right? I'm going to take these nodes and I'm going to move them up a little bit. And what we're going to eventually be doing is just merging this image over our original footage. So let's disconnect time speed and we'll connect our media in one to our media out again. And now we just have the original footage, right? So now let's merge our cloned freeze frame over our media in one. So this is gonna give us about what we had before, right? So it's just the still image, but we can actually limit this with a mask in our merge. So if I grab a circle, scale this down, you can see it's kind of like a little window. If we go to frame 23, we can just be like, bloop, <laughs> it's gone now, bloop. You see what we're getting at here? We basically just need to make a little patch here and track it to our footage. So let's do some tracking. I'll get rid of that mask for now. I'm just gonna click off of everything and hit shift spacebar and type T-R-A-C-K. And what we want is the planar tracker. Planar tracker, and this makes a planar tracker node. Let's take the output of media in one and just drag it into the planar tracker. That's just whatever footage we're going to track. And with the planar tracker node selected and brought up in our second viewer, we can select what we wanna track. And it's a good idea to basically do everything that we're about to do on frame 23 because that was where we started. It's just kind of good to make that our home frame. So in the planar tracker here, reference time, make sure to hit set on frame 23. And we're just gonna draw a little shape around this spray bottle. And we're gonna use this really nice high contrast spray bottle to do our track. Operation mode is track, reference time is 23. I'm gonna go down to this track to end button right here and track to end. Now it's going to do a very nice job of tracking the rest of the shot. And we have all our little white tick marks here. Each one of these is a keyframe for our tracker. And we can go up here to where it says reference time and 
hit go, and that'll bring us to our original frame, frame 23, and then we can track backwards, track to start. So now that we have these white tick marks throughout our entire shot, everything is tracked. And it looks like it did a pretty good job too. So now we can use this tracking information to tell our cloned still exactly where to be at any given point. So on our tracker, let's go down and click create planar transform. What that will do is make a node here called planar transform and anything that we run through that node is going to have that same motion as our tracker. It's kind of like a transform node that just moves things around, but it moves it in a specific way based on how the tracker tracked things. We're gonna put this in between our time speed and our merge because we want our cloned still to move along with our footage. So hold down shift and drag it here onto the connection. Make sure it's connected by moving it back and forth. So now if we select media out and hit two, that spray bottle should disappear if we've done it right. So now we're almost home. We have our still moving along with our footage. We just have to mask it so that it only affects just that little patch. There's a few different ways to get this mask to happen, but an easy way would be to take our planar transform and hit control C, double click off of everything and hit control V. And we're just gonna run our mask through this planar transform. So I'm gonna go to frame 23 again. I'm gonna make a polygon mask. And with that mask selected, I'll go up and draw our little shape. And then in our nodes, we're gonna take the output of our planar transform and pipe it into the blue input of our merge. That's connecting it to the mask. And we're gonna take the output of our polygon one and not bring it into the blue mask here, but the yellow input like that. And now up in our viewer, things should be looking very nice. And if we move back and forth, guess what? It is a thing. It's gone. Clone something out that's moving. What the heck? Look at that. No problem, guys. And even though a lot of things weren't really perfect, you certainly would never guess that you cloned something out right here, right? Which is the key. So now that we've done that together, if you've downloaded the practice footage, well, why don't you just give it a go on this field? Try and clone something out. Maybe this power pole, maybe this car or the house, because no matter what the shot is, it's basically the same process, right? Go into Fusion, pick a really nice frame, use your paint node, go to Clone, clone it out, do a freeze frame, track the footage, apply the tracking, merge the still over the original footage, apply the tracking, make a mask, and apply the tracking to the mask. And now we have the pole painted out. Give that a shot yourself. See if you can do it. We even left this one ungraded so you can practice the, the color a little bit, you know? Which we'll cover, cover in, in other videos, maybe, you know? We'll see. Nice, right? Now you can say that you fought in the Clone Wars. So I had to make it. I had to make that joke. There we go. Mad scientist skills attained. We are clone. We are clone wars. We are the clone wars. Get it? Clone Wars, because it's like that movie with the spaceships. Some people liked it, some people didn't. That's all right. Everyone has their own thing they can like and not like. You should like this video, then you would know. And if you dislike it, what are you doing? What, you go around telling people you don't like stuff? That's weird.